You will need a pair of scissors, a purple hook, a flower loom, and some yarn. To begin, I'm going to go ahead and make a slip knot on my fingers and place this on the central knob of the loom. And to go ahead and make the body, I'm going to do a drawstring cast on, which requires weaving in and out of each of the pegs on the flower loom. And I'm simply going to go ahead and take my yarn and place it over the entire circumference of the flower loom. I do have a video on how to draw this drawstring cast on and I'll link that below. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is knit off each and every other peg. So you'll only have yarn in front of some pegs so just go ahead and do every other um, peg. Now I'm just going to remove my slip knot and um, pull these loops down to the bottom of the peg and go ahead and you wrap around the entire peg. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to knit for three rows. I'm just simply standard knitting, e-wrapping and knitting off each time. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a double knit stitch which requires me to e-wrap and kind of move that e-wrap down a little bit lower on the loom. So I'm just e-wrapping around once and the reason why we want that low on the loom is because I'm going to go ahead and e-wrap a second time. So there now should be three loops on each peg. I'm going to take the bottom loop on each peg and place it over both of the top two. Like I said this creates a double knit stitch which creates a thicker stitch. This is better for making toys and stuff like that which will be stuffed. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, e-wrap again around the loom after I've completed that last row. And for this one I'm just going to separate those bottom two loops because when you knit off they kind of get um, smushed together. So just separating that bottom loop into the two original and placing the bottom one over the top. I hope this makes sense. Um, double knitting is a little bit more complex than standard knitting but um, it's much better for this type of animal. I'm just going to continue that pattern for 15 rows and after I've done so for this last row instead of e-wrapping I'm just simply knitting off so I'm just going to take the bottom loop and place it over the top as you can see I'm doing here. Now I'm simply going to take the body off of the loop loom sorry so what I do to do this is just to trim the yarn and then go around the loom and um, take it off like you would a hat just a drawstring cast off I'm using my purple hook to assist me with doing this but you could also use a needle or um, whatever you prefer sometimes even my fingers will just do fine all right so that's the cute little body let's go ahead and make the head so for the head, once again, I'm just going to make that simple slip knot. And I'm, you'll find that the head is very similar to making the body. I'm going to go ahead and do that drawstring cast on where I weave in and out of the pegs. And then I'm going to just knit off, once again, every other peg, the ones that have two sets of loops. And then for this, I'm just going to go ahead and um, only do two rows of standard knitting instead of three rows. So because the head is smaller, you won't need to knit as many rows. So we're just going to do two instead of three. Alright, so after I've done those two rows, I'm going to go ahead and begin to double knit. Once again, you're just going to e-wrap once, and then go ahead and e-wrap again. Then I'm just going to take that bottom loop and once again place it over the top. This should be pretty self-explanatory now. Um, and instead of doing this for 15 rows like we did for the body, we're going to do it for 10 rows. Because the head is a little bit shorter than the body is. I'm just going to go and continue to double knit. 
Alright, so after I've done my 10 rows, I'm simply going to knit off for the last row. Once again, you don't need to e-wrap on that last row. You just need to take the bottom loops and place them over the tops. Now, what I'm going to do is just trim my yarn and take off each loop on the loom. I always confuse the words loop and loom and peg. So, sorry if I'm sounding crazy over here. It's just loop, loom, peg. Um, anyway, I'm just taking this off using the drawstring uh, cast off method like you would a hat. And there you have your little head. For the um, arms and legs, what I'm going to do is do a two-peck I-cord. This just requires that you e-wrap in a figure eight pattern to cast on and knit. Um, I do like the two-peg I-cord. However, I also would recommend doing a three-peg I-cord because it makes it a little bit thicker. My yarn was thick enough for this though that I only needed to do the two-peg I-cord. But I would experiment and see, depending on the yarn that you're working with, whether you should do the two-peg I-cord or the three-peg I-cord. And I'm just going to do this. Um, for this, I don't really measure particular rows. I measure inches. Um, so for the legs, I do about two and a half inches. And for the arms, I'd only do about two inches. Now, I do have a video on how to do a full-size teddy bear, which I will link below. That, row, that teddy bear is much bigger than this little mini bear is. And it requires two looms, the blue loom and the spool loom. So I'll link that below. Alright, so after I've done two and a half inches, I'm going to take one loop, place it over the others, knit off, ear out the final time, and knit off, and then I'm just going to cut my little strand of yarn here. And I'm going to take that loop off of the yarn, loom, see there I go again, I always can, never can talk straight, okay, and then I'm going to take my yarn and thread it through that loop. This will just kind of finish it up and ensure that the um, little arm isn't going to unravel. And there's your little legs. Once again, you're just going to continue doing this for the arm. It's the exact same pattern. You're just not going to do it as long. These arms and legs and, um, and ears, which you'll see in a second, really do knit up quite fast. So I think you could make this teddy bear in about 35 minutes. That's what I found. I can make one in 35 minutes, which really is not bad at all for a um, mini teddy bear. Alright, so let's go ahead and make the ears. Um, the ears are the most complex, but they're really not too bad. So I'm just going to make that slip knot and place it on my central knob. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that drawstring cast on, but I'm only going to do this for four loops. So I'm just going to bring that yarn back around after I've gotten to that fourth loop and just kind of do a U-turn around the peg. Then what I'm going to do is just knit off that every other peg, um, just like you would with that drawstring cast on. And then I'm honestly only going to do one row with this ears because they're so small. So I'm just e-wrapping and knitting off really for only one row. Then after I do that, how hard it is to imagine you're going to go ahead and take it off. That was quick, right? I'm just trimming my yarn and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the loop from peg 4 and place it on peg 3 and knit off. And I want to tighten my yarn as I do this so that the, there is tension in the project. Then I'm going to place the loop from peg 3 to peg 2 and knit off. From peg 2 to peg 1. If I can get it on there. And oh, maybe... Oh, there we go. I got it. And then knit that off. And then finally I'm just going to e-wrap one more time and knit that off. Then I'm just going to pick it up, place it off of the loom, and once again, just like we did with the arms and legs, place the um, end of my yarn through the loop. You can kind of tighten up these little ears, and there's the finished teddy bear with all of the parts. Alright, so to begin stuffing, after I made those other ears and other arms that I need to, I'm just going to go ahead and begin attaching stuff to the teddy bear. So I start with the head, and I'm beginning with the ears. Now, I like to position the ears in kind of a Mickey Mouse style pattern. If you That helps me. Just You know, you kind of don't want them on the top of the head, but kind of angled off to the side almost a little bit. And I like to attach these maybe three times, and that should suffice. I've cut a long strap of black yarn and I've tied a couple of knots at the end and I'm going to go ahead and begin to make the facial features. For the eyes I'm simply going to do an X below each ear. Now you could use buttons for this step but I think the um, yarn X looks fine enough. After I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and do the nose. I do this below both eyes, and I do a tr um, triangle kind of facing downward almost. I went ahead and outlined the triangle, and now I'm just going to go back and fill in each part so it's a solid black little nose. 
Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is do a line kind of down to the mouth and do a little smiley face on either side of that nose. And then I like to do these like little, I don't know if you would call them like dimples, but little lines on the ends of the smiley face to add some features. So then I'm just stuffing the head and cinching it up. For the body, what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, attach the legs first. So you kind of want to start at the butt of the body, if that makes sense. And um, I like to attach the legs actually starting kind of below the teddy bear so they don't stick out too far. And for these, you want to attach them maybe five times at most would probably be sufficient. And um, you really just want to make sure that these are stable and that they're not going to fall off since the arms and legs are kind of thin. Then for the arms, I'm going to do these below the neck area on the um, kind of the top of the body. And once again, I, you kind of want to start these on the back by the shoulder blade and reach them out so they kind of line up with the legs. Once again, five times should be enough. Now I'm going to go ahead and stuff the body, so I'm just stuffing it, and it's time for me to attach the head. This is the most crucial part of the teddy bear. If this head isn't on there well, it will be the first body part to fall off, so make sure you really, really do it well. I'm just going to go ahead and cut my ends and thread them into the teddy bear, which is a little tricky, and there's the final product. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed making these little mini bears with me, and next week we will be making panda bears. Panda bears. Oh. <laughs> Stay tuned. Bye.